But then we started the formal part of the test, which is to have somebody else come into the room while you're out of there, and by a random means, by choosing a counter out of a, out of a bag, which is what we used, we used poker chips numbered from 1 to 10, would then place it in the appropriate cup, turn the cups all down, and then leave the room. And uh, we would come in, and he would, and so I wouldn't know where it was. I couldn't give any clues, mm -hmm. subconsciously or consciously. And uh, he got one right out of 10, which is exactly what you would expect by chance alone. And of course, he was the most astonished of everybody because he'd never really tried it in a double-blind test like that. And then he said, of course, oh, I see what it is. This encyclopedia on the shelf here has gold stamping on the cover. And that's what distracted the stick. I said, wait a minute, but you did 20 of them, tw out of, and you got 20 out of 20 when you knew where the gold was. And he said, oh, yes, well, that's because we were a little further away from the encyclopedia. And I said, no, that encyclopedia, that is not gold. It's mm. gold color, but it's not gold, believe me. Mm. And he said, well, there must be some gold behind it in the wall. We haven't torn our wall down to see if there's any gold in there. Oh, well, you better do that. You know, yes, yeah. I'll, I'll rush home and do that right away. <laughs> well, just amazing. Um, now, then we move to sort of another group of people who um, are out there sort of, well, I guess there's no sort of about it. They're out there actually fleecing people, sure. and, uh, uh, and you wrote a book about it um, called The Faith Healers. <coughs> yes. And, uh, uh, boy, there's a lot of them out there. Um, uh, there were a lot, and there's a lot that have come along uh, in recent years to replace those that have gone. Oh, yes. Yeah. And um, I, I want to hear a little bit about, uh, well, first of all, W.V. Grant um, from a few years ago, uh, who was uh, one of these healers. Um, if I have my notes right, um, I think he was the one that referred to a Dr. Jesus, or was that well, another? Well, most of them use the expression Dr. Oh. Jesus, but he was very big on Dr. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. But uh, he was one of the people I mentioned in my book, The Faith Healers, mm. which is currently on sale and available at your bookstores. <laughs> um, the Faith Healers, the book itself, didn't make much of a stir because people who want to believe in this thing won't buy the book. They don't want to see the evidence. And people who don't believe in it buy the book and they say, yeah, it's exactly what I expected. Uh, there's nothing there. The Faith Healers don't feel. Uh, they, uh, they don't heal anybody, pardon me. The Faith Healers don't heal anybody. They have lots of faith but they don't heal anybody. Mm. And I think I've never met one that is not an outright conscious crook because they use gimmicks to make it appear as if they've healed people. Such things as telling them to stand up and walk out of a wheelchair, which they'd never been in before in their lives. They were seated in a wheelchair, but they didn't need to sit in. And when they stand up, the audience thinks, wow, that person is healed. Yeah. That person knows that he or she isn't healed, but they don't give away the act. If they do, that part of the tape recording is not used on the air, you mm. see. They're they're crooks, and they deserve to be locked up, in my opinion. W.V. Grant was very big on this sort of thing, and he used all kinds of the standard gimmicks that have been used for a couple of generations now by the faith, faith eaters to make people believe that they really can do what they say they can do. And there was Peter Popoff and such. You saw that I yes. demonstrated him at the, uh, the lecture the other night. And uh, I put Peter Popoff out of business. He declared bankruptcy, went out of business for a short time. Mm. But now he's back on television again because people forget. Yeah. They want and they need to believe that it's true, you see. So they forget all the negative evidence. And W.P. Grant actually did get locked up for income tax evasion, perhaps because I brought uh, the attention of the IRS to him. I don't know. But uh, in any case, he got locked up. He's now out. And I'm sure he'll be back at it any time at all because it's the only talent he has. Mm. So he wasn't locked up for conning people. He was locked up That's for... <laughs> yeah, they, they just like Al Capone, they got him for the wrong thing, you see, mm -hmm. but they got him. Now, the Peter Popoff case was very interesting because uh, this was a national story. It broke mm -hmm. on the, the uh, Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, millions of people saw that, and, uh, which was a great thing. It, it put, put uh, Popoff out of business almost immediately. Um, tell us a little bit about sort of how that operation worked. Um, uh, I know you went in and um, mm -hmm. had to do a little bit of investigation to find out exactly what technique he was using. Yeah, we, it was pretty evident to us from the beginning. We uh, saw that he was using the usual interview techniques, which is hours before they start the, uh, the videotaping and the actual service, as they call it. I call it a show, but they call it a service. Uh, they have people wandering around the audience interviewing people. What is your problem? And he, what is your address? You live where? 
and this kind of thing. This is all being picked up backstage and stored and then being fed back to him when he gets out on the floor through a concealed hearing aid, you see. Mm. So that was the gimmick that he was using. It was supposed to be the voice of God. It was the voice of his wife backstage <laughs> reciting this whole thing to, as you saw from the videotape that I used from yeah. the Carson show. And by the way, Carson remembers that very well. I mm. spoke to him on the phone uh, several months ago, and the first thing he brought up is he says, I'll never forget the pop-off episode. <laughs> I said, you remember that? No, he said, oh, do I remember that? Oh. I'm still talking about it. Oh. it. It's the most amazing piece of footage. When you, yes. when you see the original, uh, well, just a clip of it yeah. that aired, um, and then you see that same clip but <coughs> overlaid yeah. with the, uh, the soundtrack in the, the background of what right. he was hearing yes. through his ears. It is astonishing, isn't it? Because at first you could say, wow, there must be a miracle. He couldn't know these things. Yeah. Uh, God must be speaking to him, but God sounded like his wife to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and moving, f and unfortunately, um, he's back on television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that can be done to get these people off the air? Yeah, get smart and don't tune in and don't buy the products and whatnot. Don't send money to them. Yes, uh, there is something that could be done, but you can't get the government to do it mm. because as the uh, Attorney General of California at the time, many years ago, told me, I'll never get reelected if I come out against minister anybody, reverend anybody. I don't care whether he's a real reverend or not. Mm. And I asked him, I said, is it your job to get reelected or to do what you were elected to do in the first place? And that, that made me pay the lunch bill because he got up and left in a huff. Uh. So, but no, it's very difficult, Tony, to get the government to do something about it. They'd rather just ignore that and say, okay, shh, let's not disturb that whole situation. They'll get them on income tax, but they won't get them for being crooks and taking money dishonestly. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit, this subject really fascinates me because I was brought up in the fundamentalist uh, atmosphere mm -hmm. uh, as a youngster. And, uh, um, and to see this perpetuated and new generations falling for the same things that have mm -hmm. been happening for years, it's just too bad. Well, don't, don't assume that, uh, that all religious people are crooked, not by any means, of course. But there are people in the, in the trade, the most prominently known ones and such, who are and that should be stopped by, by legal processes, and we should have that protection from our government, and we haven't got it. Mm. Um, now, one of the current ones on television is a fellow by the name of Benny Hinn. Oh, yes. And um, I want to talk a little bit about his technique. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've done a little bit of reading, uh, research. I know there's um, some folks out there who believes that he uses a type of uh, hypnotism or mesmerism um, uh, to uh, get these people to fall over yep. and I want to talk a little bit about that and your opinion on that Well, it's known as slaying in the spirit. Mm. It's very common in charismatic movements and such and people who go to these services Know what's expected of them when he gestures at them. They're supposed to fall over mm. and uh, You'll sometimes see them look behind and make sure there's someone there to catch them uh, Sometimes they're not too sure but Benny Hinn's people are rehearsed on the staircase on the way up onto the stage where the cameras don't show them and the rest of the audience can't see them. That's way below that level. Mm. And uh, they're told what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And when, by the time they get up on stage, all you have to do is turn to them and go like this, and they fall over en masse. Now, there was a time when the evangelists used to do it to one person alone. Be healed, hallelujah, and whatever, and they'd fall over. But Hen, Hen just goes out there and goes woof like this, and four or five of them fall over <laughs> at one time. Yeah. And the people standing behind them, if you are up close enough to hear, as we were on many occasions, they'll say, now, just now, kind of a thing. So they know that they're supposed to fall over, and they know uh -huh. they'll be caught and laid out on the stage and slain in the spirit, it's called. It's strictly a gimmick, it's choreography, and it's very effective for the people at the front who don't know what the gimmick is. Yeah, and the people watching at home on television. Oh, yes, of course. That's the main thing, of course. Yeah. Because those tapes, sometimes they'll go for two and a half hours just to get 30 minutes of tape that they can use. Mm. Now, I've heard you talk a little bit about uh, uh, sort of a, an expose or a, uh, I guess you were on a documentary 